the pipes. A toy plane positioned atop some shelves, flew off the shelves and hit me in the face while I was on the computer. The stacking intensified, until it was no longer one to two stacks a day, but three to four a day. We began to admit we had a problem. By the end of spring, F and T were fighting like cats and dogs, and T eventually left. I came home one evening to find all the upstairs windows open. I was the first to come home, and nothing had been stolen. We found a marble in the garbage disposal, but not until I'd been running it. We had to buy a new one. F's a Jew. I'm not religious. She suggested we get someone to bless the house, and eventually convinced her rabbi to do it. He did it, and things got better for a while. He did an entire ceremony, and the house stopped being stuffy and intimidating, like it had grown to be. The noises stopped for the most part, marbles stopped popping up, and we got only a few stacks a week. The old barn remained odd, especially at night, and occasionally we'd have to go in there to turn off lights or close doors that had turned themselves on. We went trail riding that summer on the property, only for both our horses to spook at nothing by the stream, dump us, and run off to hide in the barn. We seriously don't know what they spooked at, and we still can't get them to go near that stream. No, it isn't water. They're fine with water, if it isn't that stream. Other than a few oddities, things were better. My sister visited me for the first time at my house. We'd met in town once, when she drove up here, but I didn't really want her knowing where my house was, and remarked that the house creeped her out. My girlfriend at the time said the same thing when she first saw the house. But, like I said, things were a lot better. This winter, things have gotten bad again. It started in late November, and just got worse, accompanied by new ones. I went to bed one night, and began hearing classical music. I asked F to turn it off, and she said it wasn't her music. It stopped a few minutes later. We sometimes hear a click in the basement. F got a new boyfriend a few months back, who we'll call L he claims something watches him from the attic, although he only first claimed this a week or two ago. F's reluctant to go upstairs, and I come home to find her sleeping on the couch sometimes. Money's tight, so we got another roommate, the first one we've had since end they took the spare bedroom, which we kept empty, aside from furniture and left, and told me yesterday, after only a month here, that they couldn't stay anymore, and had to go. They just didn't feel comfortable here. The stacks are worse again, too. I woke up this morning with the attic key in the door, and the door unlocked. I always lock it when I'm done going up there, so it doesn't pop open and a dog doesn't go up there. I never leave the key in the door. I decided to try and figure out what happened, and called the woman I bought the house from to talk to her. I didn't tell her we'd been having any problems, and she hasn't been to the house in over a year, so she doesn't know really what's been happening. I just told her I wanted to know the history. She told me she was glad I liked the house so much, because she hadn't wanted to tell me quite everything when I bought the place. Apparently she rented it out in the 80s, she's owned it since the mid-70s, and only lived in it for a few years then. She lived in it again in the 90s, and rented it out in the 2000s, and her tenant ended up hanging himself. In the house. In my fucking closet. There's an exposed beam in the ceiling, so I guess that's as good of a place as any. She said it like it was a joke. I don't think that's the only thing that has happened here. I don't think that explains why the barn's got so many problems, or why the attic does. F's leaving, moving in with L says she can't handle living here. I'm tempted to agree with her, and have begun looking for a new place. It's just too stressful living here. No, we didn't have some big event happen. No, we didn't have skeletons or ghosts pop out and attack us, and Slenderman isn't haunting us. We're just tired of it. My TV randomly turns itself off at night, only to turn back on and wake me up, on different channels. My windows open, it's always drafty and cold. It's a thousand little things, no rattling chains or screaming banshees. It's just uncomfortable here. F's packing up, but says she won't leave until I've got a place to go. 
The new roommate, we'll call him a, plans on leaving Tuesday. I'm considering taking a job down in Kentucky, and I'm driving down there to look at a house Monday. It's new construction, and I think all my houses from now on will be. I hope that you enjoyed tonight's broadcast. If you enjoyed tonight's story, then please subscribe to the channel as more green texts will appear daily. A new broadcast will appear when the clock strikes midnight central time. Alright guys, I'm going to tell y'all a story that happened about two years ago, since I'm stupid and don't know how to green text and I'm on mobile, it will take a little while to upload it all. It happened at my grandma's house, in a small mountain town in New Mexico, it's so high up in the mountains you can stand in clouds, back to the story, we were up there for my grandma's funeral because our aunt got the house and we got money, anyways, I was outside on the back porch, it was huge because we were on the side of a mountain, it went all around the whole house except one side, there had always been this house slash barn thing at the bottom of the hill, it had a huge gas canister and when you walked past it, it would smell bad. It constantly had flies, raccoons, squirrels, bears, etc. Also it was pine trees fucking everywhere. So anyways, we had a point .22 and were just taking pot shots at anything that moved. We also had a trailer that sat there for as long as I could remember right off the back porch. It had been abandoned for as long as I can remember, although my brothers and cousins told me they used to stay in it. Anyways it had been abandoned and was I 16 at the time. My cousin dared me to shoot it, since I don't back down from a dare, shot at one of the wheels, it fucking exploded and it tipped and rolled down the hill at that barn thing, it hit it and the gas canister, all we heard was a loud ass crash. The next thing see will probably stay in my mind forever. Three butt ass naked men run out. Anyways, these three naked ass guys run out, one of them was so fat and fucking hairy he could pass as a gay Bigfoot. And run towards the house and go under the porch, our parents run out and are all freaking out and shit, since part of my family is major redneck, they have rifles, shotguns, etc. Anyways, we all decide to shoot these weird fuckers, two of my cousins go on one side, one of my brothers stays on the porch with our uncle's handgun, and me and my brother are on the other side of the house, they are armed with their hunting rifles while my bro has a hunting shotgun, while I'm armed with my grandma's old ass double barrel shotgun, have I ever mentioned I have never shot a shotgun before? Anyways, I'm leading in front of my brother, despite him being 21 and me being 16 we all go around at the same time trying not to shoot each other, I come around first and the skinniest fucker runs at me with a knife, I didn't know what was doing so I squeezed both triggers at once, it blew my ass to the ground, and ripped the gun out of my front arm so I'm just holding it with my hand on the trigger, want to know what else got blown? A huge fucking hole inside of that guy's chest, he flies the fuck back and rolls down the hill a bit and stops, in the meanwhile, I'm fumbling about to reload because another one of the fuckers is running at me, since I'm under the porch and swings it at me, I pull up my arm just in time, it fucking sticks into my arm and he tries to book it past me, he swung it like a golf club, it's fucking deep in my arm too, try to pull it out and it's the most excruciating pain I've ever felt, even worse than the time I broke both growth plates in my knees in high school football. I finally managed to get it out, in the meanwhile, my cousins rush over, my brother turns and fires a buckshot into the guy's legs, he drops and tries to start crawling away. I managed to get up with help. With the help of my older cousins I get up, we are looking over the guy that my brother shot, He's still alive and has this look of pure terror on his face, he was saying some bullshit along the lines of please don't go down there, please, please, please and he wouldn't shut the fuck up, then we hear yelling, 
it was Shrek. Just kidding, it was the fat guy who was shaped like Shrek though, he lowered his shoulder and plows through all of us, I can take a hit, but this fucker was fucking strong, I'm on the ground and look up he's just yelling and running straight back into the woods, I hear an ear deafening shot, my cousin shot him in the back with a .308 round from his hunting rifle, he drops and is wiggling around on the ground, by this time Evermn is outside while this shit is happening, which includes kids under the age of 10. My bro runs down with his handgun, he's a personal trainer and still is so he's pretty big. He runs over and has the big guy on gunpoint while one of my cousins runs over to help him. I get up and dust myself off, while still bleeding, just kinda hold the wound and walk up to the guy I shot. It will never leave my mind, his chest was literally exploded. Anyways, I call one of my cousins over, load up my shotgun and walk back down to the barn, he tries to stop me and I just tell him to follow, we walk down together while my aunt calls the ranger or sheriff or whatever he was, it was a mountain town. We walk up to this barn and inside is the most foul smelling, reeking mounds of something we have ever seen, thought the guy I shot was bad. 9 dead bodies, 4 were skeletons, 3 were rotting, half eaten, 2 were recent kills. I fucking puked. One of them was a kid younger than me. He had gone missing a few weeks before we got there. I remember because my aunt was telling my younger cousins not to run off cause the kid probably had gotten eaten by a mountain lion, my cousin just kinda turned away with an angry look. My cousin was fucking pissed, he had kids and they were younger and he walks back up the mountain to the two guys, they had managed to drag the fat guy back to his skinny friend. He kinda looked like a scrapper from the Fallout 3 point lookout DLC, my cousin was fucking furious, he pointed his gun at the skinny one's face and we had to fucking hold him back, he had kids, we all understood but Jesus fucking Christ. They were going to cannibalize that kid back there. I was feeling like shit so I just walked up to the porch holding my arm and kinda just sat down, the ambulance can't get up the rocky ass road up to the house so my uncle drove me to the hospital the whole time I just stayed silent, he would ask questions and I would just sit there and stay quiet. I couldn't get the image of the bodies out of my mind. We got to the hospital and they treated the wound, I had to get a tetanus shot, etc. The cop was lazy as fuck and just waited for me to come back so he took the guys to his squad car and called in the forensic guys or whatever to get the bodies, the ones in the barn and the guy I shot. Got back around 2 hours later and just kinda walked in and was like the elephant in the room. Everyone stared at me. I usually walk around with a dead expression on my face to make people feel uncomfortable, but this time it was legit. My mom told me the cop was on the back porch so I walked out and we did the whole what happened. What did you see? What did you do? Bullshit. I told him everything that happened even with my brothers and cousins there. I just kinda sat there for a while and just stared as the guys took the bodies away, the cop took me to the side of the house where nobody could hear us, he told me something along the lines of those guys were literally insane, they were eating those people. They were cannibals, you did the right thing kid. And he just kinda walked off. And the cops and shit fucked off. When we walked back inside I just kinda sat there looking at my feet. My uncle, which is really redneck, despite him living in El Paso, Texas which is practically Beamer Town. <laughs>